on the moon and we want to communicate with it. So, to communicate with the moon you need a relatively large antenna with let's say at least 15 meters in diameter. But you only have 90 centimeters in diameter. How can you do this? So it's simple. As due to the capability of frequency shifting, you can take a big frequency, divide it by let's say 500 megahertz, separate it on multiple link stations, in this case let's say 15 or so, put them in a so-called pool. You all know cloud computing. I think most of you do. It's, it's exactly the same subject. You combine them and you have, um, let's say, communication cloud. I always call it link pool. And this pool just receives segmented the frequency with at least one load ac acting as a backup link. So, what do we have right now? If you um, take the laws of physics, calculating the spectrum and the band you've got here with this uh, combined antennas, you end up with an antenna which is even larger than a 30 diameter antenna that you have in the AGA at the very large array in uh, New Mexico. So, this is something pretty cool. So, you get a very big antenna distributed in this example across America. And it's just very small, on a rooftop, on a building, and you can't even see the difference to a normal satellite dish. No, maybe you can, but it's not uh, the original intention. So, okay, now we have to recall the fact everything is moving, and it's moving pretty fast in regards of mass very fast. So we have the problem mass is really hunting down over the earth with all these communication windows. So one good thing about this approach is you're using the same effect that you have in the cloud computing using about distributed computing power. You have an always standby backup units right in the spot like this one. So if you imagine that mass is moving this side, then this unit is already um, turning around to mass, setting everything up pulling into the frequencies and if this one goes out it takes over. So you end up with a, and this is very interesting, just go to the next slide and we can go back again. This. This is something that really took a lot of work but it looks quite easy. Um, you've got a lot of numbers in here. So we did uh, some number crunching as we started building our prototypes to see what we've come up with with this system. So if you do one single link station. One single link station with a 90 centi diameter antenna um, could be transmitting more than 50 megabits up and down speed to a satellite in a geostationary orbit. And now comes the interesting part. Did you know it's 6, 37, 60, oh God, 36,000 kilometers away from Earth? And the most important thing, it's 24 7. Why is it 24 7? So, as you see, all are 24 7. Um, our goal is to be place at least around 100 nodes around Earth. It may sound a lot, but if you think about it, 100 nodes, it would just mean about uh, two or three nodes in Germany, and it's quite easy to find someone who just takes a satellite dish in his uh, backyard, plugs it into the internet, and it's okay. So, it's not quite. Um, to name something about this, the energy consumption of the entire system it does not exceed more than 100 watt. So your computer does use more energy than one of the stations. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, so, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I want to explain why it's 24/7. Just go back. As you see, in the large number of stations and this, uh, with uh, rotating principles of the pools, you can see that there is almost an ultimate a weighable link pool on every side of the Earth. So if Mars is rotating around Earth, the link pool is always following Mars. Or more precisely, it's beforehand there. So Mars can just get into the spot, communication can happen, and so on. So it's really is complicated the, the technology behind this because you have to do uh, recalculate all the data packets because you receive them at different times, different times, you have the delays in internet and so on. But we have uh, protocols and ways found to deal with this. So if you need more details in this regard, just ask me. Um, okay. So back to our number sheet. So one interesting thing for our team, as we are a uh, team participating in the Google Analytics Prize, is this one thing. This is quite normal. We are um, communicating with planets. Yeah, great. Okay. But communicating with an object on the surface is something completely different. So we have here 
the moon cast. This means our rover is standing on the surface of the moon and we want to transmit data. Our rover has a relatively low energy budget. Current estimations are about, let's say, 60 watt at best. So if you have noon at uh, moon day, you have 60 watt due to the solar energy, not more. Normally, let's calculate with 40 watt. 20 watt is the total energy available at best for the antenna. As you uh, saw on Arne's presentation, the antenna and communication system is one combined unit. This is something really special. It's a uh, self-developed technology in this regard. So, and we have calculated that we can use only, f we need 15 link stations, 15, that's an important number in this regard, to get 50 mbits, megabits down speed, and most important, 500 kilobits megabit up speed, and again, 24-7. This may not be that much that you've got when you consider your uh, VDSL anschluss or uh, connection or something like this, but it is enough to fulfill the requirements set by the Mooncast. And that's very important. Okay. Okay, and then let's look at these examples. So if you see Earth to the Moon. Earth to the Moon is quite easy again. It's like the uh, geostationary orbit because the distance isn't that big because 40,000, 400,000, Okay, there is a difference, but it's not that much compared to this number. <laughs> and if you look at uh, Earth, it's again 50 megabits, but not more, definitely not more. And this is very important. The system, if you calculate 100 link stations on the entire Earth, facing at least half of them to the object you are communicating with, you could end up with a bandwidth from Earth to Mars with 5 megabits by a distance of 130 million kilometers. So why is this important? Currently, um, NASA has uh, some Mars exploration missions going on, and if I am correctly, they are currently using only about 50 kilobits of their, away, uh, of their bandwidth to communicate downstream data with Earth. They could use about more, about, let's say, one megabit, but uh, not more currently. That's had to do with the technology they've embedded in their, on their sending side at the probes. So our goal is to have lower energy requirements on the sending part, so in deep space, but have to larger antennas, virtual antennas, not real ones, because real antennas have limitations. You can't build a 60 diameter antenna. Okay, you can, but you don't have the place for this, and you have to build it all over the surface. Uh, so distributing the antenna as a virtual antenna grid around Earth is a quite great, great option. So you got Earth as one big antenna. Oh just <laughs> have to imagine this. Um, okay. So one thing to note about this is um, we already have this problem a lot uh, in regards of space communication. For example, with the Apollo moon landing, NASA sent out uh, chips for the coasts to extend the communication window with the crew on the um, lunar surface to get a full-time video sequence. Otherwise, they had to wait at length, it was four hours to get the next communication window. But they wanted to do a live streaming of this. So they had to manually extend with chips their communication grid. They do pretty much, not pretty much the same in terms of technology, but of the idea. Yeah, this is uh, currently a project we're working on. We've already have developed some prototypes in this regard, and this is very important about this. We're not talking about a simple idea. We have uh, partnered with two companies in this regard, which I can't name right now, sorry. And they've agreed to allow us to place more than 100 stations. So they are giving us place at their grounds to place the stations where we have internet and the needed maintenance, because if something like a tsunami comes and your dish gets caught, uh, rolled over, someone has to pull it up and check it again. So we always need a technique in, in place. Not all time, but sometimes once a year or so. Yeah, and this is, let's say, our biggest side project for 2010. We want to start with a small node network, like let's say 15 nodes, and see how this works out. Yeah. One thing about this that should be interesting for all of you, due to patent and other things like this, Everything we do here will be licensed as Creative Commons completely. So this technology will be available to everyone because the only way something like this can work is everyone could participate in this. So everyone can decide, I want to put a link station in my garden and want to get a bandwidth share of this network. 
So you can pull the internet from Earth into space. And this enables